Anita. Good morning. I'm George Grant, welcoming you to uh, this week's third edition of Good Day Grenada. It's a Wednesday morning, middle of the week, and uh, also the third day of July. And uh, hey, 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 are you guys competing to see who's going to be first on uh, Facebook? I see that Donna is there first. I think it's the first time I'm seeing her win the race. Yes. Good morning, Donna. Good to see you. And thank you very much for joining us. The mob, the rest of the mob will be here very shortly. Folks, good morning coming up to you uh, today. And uh, we're going to begin with a rundown. I do have a piece which I published on the website uh, within the last hour, actually. It's this week's edition of the NDC Heartbeat. And it is captioned, Our Crumbling Infrastructure. Yeah? That's a mouthful. Um, after we do that, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what happened yesterday. Yeah. Pretty good day. Pretty good day. And uh, I have a little bit of a quiz for you as well as a result of that trip that we did yesterday. And yes, we do have the national report for you this morning. And then, guess what? She's not, I don't think she's even in Grenada. I think she's in Trinidad right now. But we are going to be joined by uh, a good friend, Sharon Roberts. Let's see here. Uh, Ryan is saying, hey, Ryan, you're early this morning as well. And Benedict, hello, Benedict. He's saying a wonderful overcast Wednesday. Yeah, kind of overcast here this morning as well. Now, let's get down to work. This week's edition of the NDC's Heartbeat is captioned, Our Crumbling Infrastructure. And I quote, in September 2011, the NDC administration secured the single largest ever project approval from the World Bank. Signed by Nazem Burke, the then finance minister, on behalf of the government of Grenada, some of the funds were applied to refresh the Lance and Hubbard Bridges, the Holy Cross RC Church, and St. Uh, Patrick's Anglican Primary Schools, the Cadrona and the Hillsview Homes for the Elderly, the Rockfall Mitigation at Sendal Tunnel, and River Road. All these projects were implemented between 2013 and 2017 by the current administration, and they try at every turn to take credit for them. There have been no other government-initiated infrastructural projects implemented since these. That is, despite the constant boasts of economic growth and surpluses. Instead, our infrastructure continues to crumble while our government remains hapless. The Ministry of Works, presided over by Reckless Bowen, has all but collapsed. The nation's road are the worst they have been in a very long time. Road maintenance is done in a scattershot manner with no planning. Contracts are given out on a mainly partisan basis rather than on knowledge and competence. This results in maintenance work having to be done repeatedly in the same areas at great cost to the Grenadian taxpayer. Potholes and plunge pools wreak havoc on people's vehicles, costing them thousands of dollars. Yet, the people are made to pay the highest petrol tax in the Caribbean. A drive around the country, especially along the west coast and certain parts of the eastern main road, reveals the general neglect of our roadways, including the absence of protective guardrails in some areas. 
the state of the drains in and around the town of St. George is deplorable. The flood mitigation project and River Road, for which the NDC administration had already secured finance, financing, has not been implemented. The Grand Dance Main Road and the True Blue Road to uh, the St. George's University require urgent repair. The NDC calls on government to recognize that these main thoroughfares are major contributors to our economy so that their maintenance must be given priority. Even our main government buildings and structures continue to deteriorate and some are already simply derelict. Insufficient attention, yes, insufficient attention is given to our heritage buildings. Many, including our former Governor General's residence, the Houses of Parliament, the High Court, Public Library, and former residents of Maurice Bishop have not been touched since Hurricane Ivan. What kind of government will not attend to its heritage buildings. Our young children do not have a public library, and our people do not have courts. How then can those in office continue to say that they care about us? The NDC, in its last term, had plans already in motion for the refurbishment and commissioning of the public library. Also part of the project for the area where the Parliament building now stands included the construction of a hall, a hall of justice. Most of the work was already done, including the selection of the location and the architectural drawings. Based on the lack of movement within this urgently needed building, we are only too thankful that in office, we were able to do all the necessary preliminary work for the Parliament building, including securing the funding and selecting the contractor before we demitted office in 2013. Had we not taken it to the point of no return, we are certain that this project would not have been implemented. Our hospitals are in poor physical state. Construction of the new wing at the General Hospital is never ending. The truth is that that infrastructure was built against the World Health Organization's advice. The outside was plastered and painted as part of an election gimmick in 20, 2018 but the inside is an empty, unfinished shell. Mitchell and Bowen cannot, praise, cannot raise the funds to complete this project. Since May of 2018, the judiciary, one of the three equal arms of government, has been crippled. The courts have nowhere to sit the judges, court staff, and lawyers are forced to dispense justice in the most unsatisfactory, uncomfortable, and deplorable conditions. Some judges have not been able to sit at all. We now understand that work has stopped altogether on the Clico building on Young Street where government promised to accommodate the courts from September. We wonder if this has anything to do with the recent reports of cash flow problems at the Treasury. The National Stadium continues to deteriorate and much needed maintenance work is not being done. 
Many of our schools continue to fall into disrepair. And in some, like the GBSS, destroyed furniture has not been replaced. All of this shows that we have incompetent, uncaring people in charge of our affairs. They neglect the very things for which they were elected to serve. The solution is simple. NNP needs to shape up or ship out. That the Pilgrims is the, uh, this week's edition of the NDC Heartbeat, which uh, you can take a look at. We put that up on the website just a, a short while ago, okay? Ha! Ah. Food for thought, food for thought. Um, and in just a wee bit, I'm going to be checking in with uh, our friend. Yeah, I see her already showing up. Boy, does she have a big painting there as a backdrop this morning. This lady is traveling more than American Airlines. Good to see you, Sharon. We'll get to you in just a wee bit. Well, my dear friends, finally, we got it done. We'd been telling you about this trip that uh, we planned on doing around the island. Well, we didn't actually get right around the island. We went as far north as Liverat. And uh, we left here yesterday morning at 11.30. Didn't get back until 8 o'clock last night. We began with a visit down to Fort Judy, and then we headed up along the East Coast. And I'll tell you, I got to confess, I went to parts of Grenada yesterday I had never ventured close to and returned with an even greater appreciation for this homeland of mine. I am so blessed to be a Grenadian. One of the things which really moved me was the fact that there are so many secluded spots on the island where you can retreat for a few moments of solitude, peace, and quiet. Just you and nature. Trees, birds, blue skies, the wide open ocean. But alas, I got to tell you, even that we're destroying. It was heart-wrenching to see spots on this island yesterday where our magnificent beauty is being annihilated by indiscriminate dumping. Dumping by people who may have gone to one of these idyllic locations for a picnic or a party and left all their garbage around without giving thought to the beautiful environment which they found there in the first place. And yes, believe it or not, my dear friends, there are also those who Maybe after doing some construction work around the house or their business, find that they have some leftovers or some items which they may wish to discard. But rather than taking that garbage to perseverance, they simply go instead to a secluded spot near a beach and dump that garbage. A couple of tour operators, Mandu Seals and uh, Ian Blakey, uh, and myself, we're working feverishly to have a program edited for you by this weekend. We shot a lot of stuff yesterday. We went up the West Coast as far as uh, Livera and came back down through uh, uh, the central part of the island. We did not come down the west coast. We're going to do the west coast eventually. But um, I do hope you'll be able to join us on Sunday. And hopefully we'll have this all done by Sunday uh, for this edition, this coming weekend's edition of Sundays with George Grant. By the way, one of the uh, 
Oh, da -da, da -da, da -da. One of the, um, hmm, 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 what's going on here? Yeah. One of the things uh, I captured yesterday was a funny picture. I want, I want to show you this. Hang on a sec here. Just let me uh, see if I can pull this up. Yeah, take a look at this. Isn't that a beautiful street sign? Uh, yeah. It says Mosquito Avenue. Do you have any idea where that is? Join us on Sunday. You'll find that. Okay. Okay, so let me get back here. Oh, ooh, ooh, boy, you guys are busy on Facebook this morning. Um, Donna is there. Benedict's there. Uh, uh, Ryan says he's just done his bike riding. Hey, teach me how to ride when you get back down here. Uh, um, Ryan. Benedict says he's having some buffering issues. Well, you know, I don't know. We're going out of here fine, but I am also noticing that uh, a little while, right now it's fine, but a little while ago I uh, was having some trouble with uh, getting the signal on, uh, on my, uh, my uh, local PC. Um, Ryan says here uh, he's having some mild buffering as well. Joycey Smith is also saying good morning. Um, Ryan says, crumble indeed, and it's not a <laughs> culinary delight. Yeah, Ryan, the country is crumbling. I hate to admit it, but it is. Um, Benedict says, I'm constantly looping the intro. Oh, what about that? Uh, Sharon says to him, maybe you need to reboot. So I guess Sharon's got everything going fine. Um, Ryan says, no accommodations for Grenada's courts. But yet, there is a new parliament building. Yay, very observant, Ryan. And John Bruno is saying good morning. Um, and Ryan wants to see the secluded spots. Ryan, you're going to have to wait until Sunday morning. I'm going to try really hard. You know, I may not, but I'm going to try really hard to not let the cat out of the bag before Sunday morning, if you understand what I mean. Hmm? Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Um, and Ryan says here, pearls. Yes, Ryan, that's very close to pearls. Very close to pearls, that sign, Mosquito Avenue. Um, Arthur Langine is saying good morning on the day before the 4th of July, and he loves the sign. Yeah, I thought you would, Arthur. Um, Donna Joseph says, flow isn't flowing as it should, so that internet is buffering like crazy. Well, yeah, it's probably them, because, I mean, right now, my signal is fine. I'm, I'm seeing the signal just fine here. Okie doke, folks. Let me take a little break here, and we'll come back with a national report. This summer, make your dreams a reality with a Co-op Bank Summer Scissor Loan. Get up to $20,000 and qualify for a chance to win a staycation at Silver Sands. Go on a vacation. Enjoy the carnival season. Have your dream wedding or make home improvements. Make this summer sizzle with everything you want it to be. Visit your nearest retail banking unit for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Welcome home. Convenient located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center. For over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand and with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. 
Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. More than $7 million spent on school uniform programs since 2013. Details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Tuesday, July 2nd, I am Leslie Ann Johnson. More than 30,000 households have benefited from the government's Uniform Assistance Program, which began in 2013. This translates into roughly $7 million expended on the program from its inception. During the government's weekly post-cabinet briefing on Tuesday, SEED officers received vouchers to be distributed to vulnerable families under the program. Preschoolers are again being catered for, a plan that was introduced last year. The briefing was facilitated by Senator Winston Garraway, Minister with Responsibility for Disaster Management and Information. He says the presentation is in addition to the school books and uniform program that is ongoing as his government continues to assist the needy. Only recently, the United Nations Women recognized the Ministry of Social Development and, by extension, the Government of Grenada for sponsoring these social programs. As a result, they have pledged the continued support for the government and will look to raise resources to ensure that we continue to provide this kind of support to our families. Government made a pledge to the nation that if we are successful in restoring fiscal management and discipline and in the economy continues to grow, the people, that is, the people of the country will benefit from the growth. Today's exercise is a manifestation of this kind of support that the government would have promised. Program Manager for Social Funds, Ms. Karina Ed, provided an overview of the number of applications received for processing and the level of assistance that government is giving. The figures that we have to date from 2013 to 2019 is that we've reached over 30,000 households. Uh, that translates into approximately $7 million. And on an annual basis, government's budgets for that um, in the tune of $1 million. Um, there are further breakdown of figures, um, 2017, where there were 6,254 applications that was distributed, 2016, 5,074, 2015, 4,520. Uh, altogether, you can say that it's 5,000 applications pretty much that we get annually, and that translates into um, about 12,220 children that benefit from the program. The allotted amount per household is $450. Secondary school students will receive $250. Primary school, $100, and preschoolers, $50. The application process is done through the Ministry of Social Development, working with SEED officers. The Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC, has outlined current and new advancements that can be expected from the Council in the near future to help enhance the examination experience, performance of students, and ease of access to information. These were outlined during a recent visit to Grenada by Registrar Mr. Glenroy Cumberbatch. Details from Annette Moore. CXC Registrar Glenroy Cumberbatch says that the advancements to make CXC more user-friendly for today's students have been ongoing since 2009, spanning electronic registration, testing, marking, the use of personal electronic devices, and electronic certificates. CXC is in the process of digitizing CXC and use, putting all of our services in an electronic format, basically. Um, so we began back in 2009 with electronic registration where persons can register electronically to take any subject at CXC. Um, in 2013, we did electronic marking. We started with some subjects. We have four subjects still not being marked electronically. Um, in 2017, we did electronic testing uh, with multiple choice papers only. Uh, in 2018, we did 
electronic testing of multiple choice papers, short answers, essays, and so on. But we also, in 2018, allowed students to bring their own devices uh, to take part in electronic testing. Um, in 2018, we offered electronic certificates. Um, for the first time, where students got the certificate as an electronic um, document that they could share, they can um, distribute, they can pass to persons and have no fear of losing it. But CXE has not stopped there. More can be expected. But we want to move to a higher level of electronic testing, which would involve the same things that I mentioned earlier. If children learn by seeing, if children learn by doing, if children learn by hearing, then the test items should include opportunities for them to see the video clips, for them to hear audio clips, and for them to do something, construct something while in the test, either an experiment or um, putting together the digestive system in the body or some other construction, some other thing that they do within the test that they would have done normally as part of the teaching and learning exercise. Improvements to make content for study more accessible is now also available. We have now um, the Caribbean Nose Master, which the, is developed in association with CXE, uh, which is available to students for them to go and search for materials that are uh, provided both by CXE and for, for teachers across the region who work with Nose Master to put the information up. So that is available to them. But we also are looking to put a learning hub in place uh, by September, which would have a whole set of material, including textbooks, available to students that they can have access to any or all information that they require in order to successfully pursue this, their, their offerings. Additionally, CXE will be doing on-demand testing, which can improve job seekers' chances of employment. Quite a large percentage of, our, of the persons, the candidates writing examinations are over 18 years old. So if you're working and a job has been advertised, or if you're home and a job has been advertised, and it says that this, to get this position you have to have five subjects or six subjects, including English and including maths, but you have English but you don't have math, then you have an opportunity to be able to write that exam outside of the cycle that is the regular cycle in May-June, which initially was set aside for being able to, to take results and get people into university in, in, a, in a decent time, but not necessarily for those who really want to go to work and so on. Aiming to improve student achievement, the Ministry of Education and the Caribbean Examinations Council held several sessions on June 26 between the CXC Registrar and stakeholders including principals, teachers and parents at the primary and secondary school level to inform them of all the recent developments in CXC and to provide any necessary clarification. For the National Report, I'm Annette Moore. This is the National Report. More news after the break. Get ready for a long, hot summer in the event you really don't want to miss. The 11th Annual Grenadian Heritage Day, Saturday 6th of July at the Old Lyonian Sports and Social Club. In a view, Harrow, Middlesex, HA1, 4QF from 1 in the afternoon till 7.30 in the evening. Hosted by the Grenada High Commission and Grenadian Community Groups featuring the best Grenadian, Caribbean and international cuisine. Fresh Grenadian produce and a wide range of stalls and attractions. Live entertainment features still band, drumming, dancing, carnival costume parade and music by London's top DJs. And for the young ones, bouncy castle, slides, face painting and more. Win a pair of return tickets to Grenada. Courtesy of Grenada Tourism Authority and British Airways in the Grand Raffle Draw and many more prizes. The event for everyone, Grenadian Heritage Day, when the spirit and warmth of the Caribbean comes to the UK. Continuing the news, Grenada's Minister for Foreign Affairs, the Honourable Peter David, will be visiting Britain from July 5th to 11th on state business. That includes meetings with Grenadians in the diaspora. The meeting with UK-based nationals will take place on Sunday, July 7th from 3 p.m. at the Acton Vale Community Centre in London. This will be the Minister's first official engagement in the final phase in the implementation of a formally structured relationship between Grenada and its diaspora communities. In the latest exercise, the Grenada government is receiving support from the UN International Office of Migration for a diaspora mapping component of the outreach. The aim of the mapping is to learn more about the socio-economic profile of the Grenada diaspora in Europe, North America and the Caribbean. The goal is to harness the skills of Grenadians in the diaspora to facilitate a matching to areas where there is a lack of that particular skill inside Grenada, Caracou and Petit Martinique. 
Mr. David says coming out of numerous consultations since 2008, staff at the Office of Diaspora Affairs has partnered with the IOM to provide technical assistance that will allow Grenada to document the skills, abilities and qualifications of Grenadians resident in the diaspora. And one of the avenues for achieving this objective is through the launch of a website that will provide for conducting an online survey. The website, he says, will also serve as an ongoing conduit between Grenadians at home and in the diaspora, especially as a one-stop shop for up-to-date relevant information and coordination of all diaspora activities. The Royal Grenada Police Force has outlined plans to keep people safe during the carnival season. These will revolve around enforcement of the law and the traffic management, among others. On the 6th of August, all of the RGPF human resource will be mobilized to form part of the operational forces for the rest of the season. We're also going to see uh, an exercise of our comprehensive command, control, and communication mechanism to give effect to the operational synergy among departments. We're also going to see partnering with private security companies to augment manpower and at many, to ma at many of the mass crowd events. We're going to deliver assertive policing at all events. That's Assistant Commissioner of Police, Mr. Jessman Prince. With the road accidents being one of the main areas of concern for the RGPF, Implementation of the breathalyzer during the carnival season will be in place. Motorists will be given the breathalyzer test if they are suspected of being intoxicated. Speed checking is also going to be part of our operational uh, uh, trust for this carnival season. We hope to commence the implementation of our breathalyzer operations during that period as well. Uh, we anticipate that the laws can be ready by that time and we hope to see some breathalyzer operations during that time. The breathalyzer law was passed, but the regulation part of it was not. So we are in the process of doing the regulations. Um, the documents are with the, uh, the Attorney General's office. Uh, the legal drafting people are looking at it uh, for implementation very soon. And that's the National Report. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. All right, folks. We're obviously, uh, we're obviously having a hell of a time this morning, and my prayer is that we're not returning to the bad old days. You know, uh, things have gone pretty darn good with the stream over the past little while, but I see this morning that uh, the issues have returned. Even here on my iPhone, I'm having a tough time because the audio keeps dropping in and out, and then sometimes even the video goes. So uh, please, bear with us. Um, let me pay attention here to uh, a few of the comments that came in on uh, Facebook. John Bruno is asking, is our country slowly becoming a welfare state? Sharon says, as long as you support the NNP blindly, you will get the help that you do not even need. So says Sharon. Um, so John says, what is being done to lift the people out of the state? Sharon says nothing. The more the people depend on the government, the better they, the government, feel. Arthur Langine says, $50 for vote in a country that is doing so good. Lord, help those mouth-on-the-ground people. <laughs> yea, Arthur, pray, pray, pray. Um... Uh, and Sharon says, Amen. Uh, John says, It's disturbing to see people who are financially capable being considered as being vulnerable. You're right. That's the way the cookie crumbles in this place nowadays. That's why you hear people whining about what's happening. Um, Arthur says, I hate listening to this thing they call news. Um, okay. Folks, let me take a little break here, and uh, we're going to come back and get cranked up with uh, Sharon. A natural disaster can change your life in minutes. Preparation is the best protection for your family and business. Prepare now. Create a disaster plan and make sure everyone knows what to do. 
store water, non-perishable food, and medication. Remember basic emergency supplies such as batteries and flashlights. Trim overhanging trees. If trees near power lines are unsafe to trim, call Grenlec at 237 for assistance or advice. Install surge protectors to safeguard your electrical devices against outages and intermittent surges. For more information, visit Grenlec.com. Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. I've been a confectionery maker 16 years now. Well, as a child growing up, my grandmom always always make fudge and always make any candies, cakes, as I remember, and I always have an interest in that, you know? It's like when I'm in the kitchen, I'm very happy. If you're making coconut fudge, you put the kids just grate the coconut, you squeeze the milk, and then you strain it, and then you add your sugar, and then you put it to boil. And then after when you reach a certain stage, you get thick, so you got to beat it. Then after when you beat it, you pour it out, and then wait for a few minutes and it get hard, and then you slice it, you cut it, and then after you break it up, and then you package it to it. Providing food for 16 years now. I remember when I, I just go dropping in the foot, I was a bit younger too, and I met Miss Harris. So I went and I said, you know, I have a little product here, some fudge. I was wondering if you all would be interested to take some fudge or candies from me. I showed her, she said, you look very nice, you know? So she said, I'll try it. So she told me to bring back some another, another day. So which I, that's when I started, but Miss Harris took it from me, and then they would start, so you know? I had a good relationship with them. Of course, I felt special, you know, at least somebody taking my thing local and, you know, other people can see it because if it's, I just have it, you no know, much people come, a lot of people come in, they foreigners. So it, it was kind of special, you know, and especially when I go in there, all the workers, it's very nice to me. If I pass and they say, um, this, um, Kizzy, you ain't bringing anything this week for the thing finished, you know, they always look out for me. That's what I like. The atmosphere is nice in there. My name is Kitty Marshall. I work with Food Fair to provide you with sweet treats. Alrighty, folks, there she is. Uh, let me start by asking this young lady a question. Do you have your own corporate airplane, ma'am? Of course, you didn't know that. It's parked on the, on the airport on the left-hand side as you enter Grenada. Well, that's that's not very nice of you because I mean, as a, an old pilot here, I thought you would have at least have extended the courtesy of me to fly you around. Why? Life is interesting. Life is interesting. How are you, Sharon? I am good. You know, I I have to compliment you. You always find the most unique backdrops uh, of all the people who do this program. You're in Trinidad this morning. I'm in Trinidad. I'll be back home on on Friday evening. Okay, so you've been to Trinidad. Recently you were in England, and before that you were in uh, Florida, and then before that you were in, where was it, Mexico? Belize. Huh? Belize. In Belize. I mean, come on, Cher. And that's that's this year alone, eh? That's this year alone. Yeah. Can when you imagine? When I grow up, I want to be like you, girl. Boy, I um, when I came back from England, I thought I was in Grenada until at least next year. Yeah. But that... we had an emergency, so I had to fly out of Trin to Trinidad. 
Okay. So Pardon me? I'll be back. All is well. Okay. Everything went okay. So I'll be back home for the weekend. Okay, so great. You're and um, my luncheon, right? Pardon me? You're coming to my birthday luncheon? I am still hoping. I am not sure, but I'm very hopeful that I will be there. Celebrate your 19th birthday, right? Margaret, I'm so sorry you're not there. No, 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 my 16th. Your 16th birthday. Yes. Sweet 16. Speaking about Margaret, um, I know I know she's online because I see her showing up there on Facebook, but uh, um, she is incognito this morning. We okay. haven't heard anything from her. I hope she's doing fine. Yes, Sharon, yes. One of my one of my sisters in law yesterday asked me, "So how old are you?" Adela is the fourth anniversary of my sixtieth birthday. <laughs> fourth anniversary of your sixteenth birthday. Six zero. Six zero. Yeah, I'm get I'm getting there. So you're two hundred and forty years old. <laughs> No, I'm 64. You're 64. 64. All right. You're catching up with me. I'm going to have to pedal a little faster. You're catching up with me. Uh, Sharon, I couldn't help you. know, yesterday, yesterday afternoon, I just happened. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I just happened to flick on the TV. And I saw another match with the West Indies. Was it yesterday? And I thought to myself. I, I, I thought, was at the hospital all day yesterday. Okay. And I thought to myself, boy. Sharon must be glad that she left England. <laughs> oh, you mean day before? Day before, sorry. Man, they fought a good fight. Yes, they did. Yes, they didn't get beaten by much. They, but They did stupidness. That, 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 that run out at Allen. Man, I just wanted to clash the heads. Yeah, that it was... Sorry. That was kind of serious. Oh, by the way, uh, Margaret says, hey... Just quiet today. Sorry, Sharon. So, so she's there. She's listening to you. Yeah. She's watching. Yeah, I, that that was a silly, silly run out. But the bottom line is, Sharon, we lost another match. You know. Yeah. You know. And the the thing is, when when they were losing badly, you just say, okay, well, they're totally useless. They're no good. Yeah. But you know they have the fight. You know they have the ability. But stupidity is something else. Yeah, yeah. The problem is they do not think. Yeah. You know, and I know for a fact, because sometimes before, when I was much, much younger, and I didn't go to matches, I would say, I wonder if they know how many more runs that it is so close. But you have the big boards there. They can see. So... Make the adjustments. You know, you don't have to hit out at this point. You don't have to run unnecessarily. Yeah. I mean. Well, you know, um, there's been no doubt. I've heard a lot of talk uh, during the course of this World Cup that it's not that the Wendy's don't have talent. It's just they're not using their little coconuts. Yeah. They're full of talent. Yeah. They're full of talent, but they're just not thinking from management right down. Just not thinking. And you know, I think that's going to be even harder than rectifying the talent issue. You know, changing the mentality, the mindset. It'd have to be a mindset. You know, I, I don't know if these guys are aware that professional sports teams, you know, like hockey teams, baseball teams, football teams, these guys go through a lot of psychological training. It's not just a matter of having muscles and being able to skate and stuff like that. These guys go through a lot of psychological training. I want them to give me like three months with them. <laughs> give you three? <laughs> Would there be a team left when you get through? <laughs> no, there'll, there'll be a healthier team. There'll be, I mean, they'll be more sensible. Oh my goodness, I'm sure that my, my seven-year-old grandson could think better than that. Yeah. You know, I, I, um, I still not giving up on them. Still can't give up on them. Because when you, when you, when you have a, a, a child, you don't just give up on your child, no matter what. You have to love them unconditionally. Yeah. Yes, they're going to break your heart and you want to punch them down, but you love them. Well, you know, it's interesting you should bring that up because uh, don't, you, you don't have a calypsonian named Beckett. Oh, 
I know Beckett. I know him very, very well. All yeah. right. Well, he just came out with a calypso about the West Indies team, you know. Oh, no. And uh, no, no, hold on. Um, the man is remaining a very, very loyal supporter of the West Indies team. And he's very optimistic and very positive. I had hoped to play that this morning, but uh, I came across, j just before I went on the air this morning, I got that piece from the NDC Heartbeat, and I thought I'd better throw that in instead, you know. So, um, yeah, Beckett is still hopeful and very, very supportive of the Windies team. Fitzroy Thank Adams you. says, West Indies players have to be paid by the amount of runs they produce. You think that's going to make a difference, Sharon? I don't know. I don't know what to say again. But they, 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 they really need serious help. Yeah. Um, I wanted to mention something you, from your, from the report, from the NNP report just now. The NDC. Or, or the NNP, sorry. The, the, excuse me, you're talking about the national report. Well, there's nothing national about it. That's the reality. And you know, I call a spade a spade. <laughs> Um, some years ago, the police introduced, well, the word um, he said just now, they're implementing the, the breathalyzer. Oh, please. So what I hope is that they gazetted it. Because some years ago, when they implemented the gun, the speed gun, yeah. they, they caught a few people. And then they found out that the speed gun was not gazetted. Yeah. So the reality is they could not charge people for bringing in something like that if they always had it as different. But if they're implementing something, they have to let the public know, and it has to be in the gazette three times before they could charge anybody. So I hope that this um, breathalyzer thing has been gazetted so they could charge people and not fall under the same trap as the, as a speed gun. You know, just this past week, the uh, RGPF held a press conference to talk about their plans for Carnival. I thought that was mighty good. But again, you know, I sat and I listened to this and I just went, <laughs> because I heard more talk about, you know, enforcing the speed limits and stuff like that. Sharon, oh my God, Sharon, how many years have we been hearing the same thing over and over? It's like playing a violin, you know? <laughs> you want to take these folks seriously. You want to feel good about what they're saying. But in the long run, you know it's just going to be a whole bunch of uh, rhetoric, yada, 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 and nothing happens. And I've seen, I've seen with my own eyes a lot of racist behavior with the police. I saw a young man being pulled up on, um, what's the name of the street when you come, uh, you're in the middle of the town, the bottom of the market, and you're going up towards the fort. I don't know the name of that street, but you normally, sometimes you have a Where police KFC is? Where KFC is? Um, no, no, no. No, that's one where KFC is Granby Street. That's right. You turn and well, well, then you turn a, a right, and you're going towards the fort. Oh, oh, that's um, Halifax Street. Okay, so right by where Palmer School used to be in the old days, mm. you have a police officer there sometimes calling traffic, mm -hmm. and this young Grenadian man was driving up there, and he thought, based on the way the police was thing in her hands, he thought she called him. So he was driving and they pulled him over and they said, we didn't call you. She was just talking to somebody and thing in her hands. She thought he called because they don't do like they used to in the old days, you know, stop one side and call the other side. They don't do that. They just do all kind of strippings. <laughs> and they pull him over and he said, but I thought you called me. And she's like, no, 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 no. And the other police officer going and charge him. And this white woman coming up, they didn't call her. And he said to them, so why are you in charge her? She's a white woman. She, you know where she's going. And you in charge her. And you want to charge this young man who thought you called him. So they, they, they're totally useless. And now they have all kinds of people calling traffic. 
And it's holding all in You know, Sharon, you and I know it happens. You and I see it every day, Sharon. But when you and I talk about it, we come under fire. There are people who think we're making this stuff up. We're not. It's there for everybody to see every day. You know, the latest thing is that when they call the traffic, the hands go... Exactly. Because it looks good. What's going on inside here? Boy, we used to have a, a, a police officer named Ghost Boy. I don't know if you knew him. Nah. Man, I would stand up and watch that man call traffic, you know. Yeah. It was a beauty to behold. Yeah. Sharon, um, I guess, uh, did you hear the piece that I read this morning, the NDC heartbeat about the yes. crumbling infrastructure? Yep. Sharon, what's going on in this place, girl? Hmm. I mean, we've, we'll just be rehashing it because we've been talking about this for a long, long time, but there are a lot of issues that just aren't being addressed. Yep. A lot of nonsense going on in Grenada. And doesn't give you a sense of hope, does it? No. It doesn't. And then you see so-called sensible people who listen to them and just, I mean, Grenada is in a mess. Yeah. And I guess... One of the things that, that, that bothers me is when people who do not live in Grenada, who would say, give them a chance. The government, you know how much chance this government have? You know the amount of income poops the government have doing their so-called work? People who not thinking, who just doing nonsense. You had one just now on the, on the government report and I was tempted to just close it off because as soon as he come on, I just close it off. Yeah. Pure nonsense. I'm looking at them very carefully with this hurricane season. Speaking of a <laughs> hurricane season, now, I have to confess, because I was on the road yesterday doing this shoot for Sunday, I did not see yesterday's post-cabinet briefing. However, I do know that the Minister of uh, Disaster Management was on. And I hope, Sharon, and pray to God that he has finally released the list of shelters. You mean the Minister of Disaster? <laughs> I said disaster management. Okay, Sharon? Oh. I said okay. disaster management. Now, um, can you believe it? We're into the second month of yeah. the hurricane season without a list of hurricane shelters. And you remember Emily came on the 13th of July, eh? There you go. And these people expect us to believe them when they say how much they're doing to prepare and protect the people out of this country in the event of a natural disaster. How can you, Sharon? How can you? You know? I want you to see a hurricane shelter in St. Paul's. I just want you to see it, you'll film it, and then you show the people. That's a hurricane shelter. For those who drive past, who listen to this, it's in the yard of the Anglican Church in St. Paul's. But they will tell you, it's not the whole building, it's only downstairs. There is a hurricane okay. shelter. <laughs> As I'm listening to you here, I, you know, recently, Alan and I have been talking a lot about uh, the derelict vehicles you see around the place. Mm -hmm. And Sharon, yesterday when we did this tour up the uh, East Coast, I took a lot of video. Yet, that was only a fraction of the derelict vehicles. They are all over the place, Sharon, all over the place. And then you hear this crapola about, you know, uh, if you have a vehicle in this area or that area, please move it. And you got X number of days to do it. And if they don't move it in X number of days, drag the damn stuff away and dump it somewhere where it's, uh, it could be dumped. I, you, could, you could get around that, you know. As long as you, you vote NNP, you can leave all the vehicles anywhere. 
jeez. You know, I want people to join us on Sunday morning because they're going to be, I don't think they're going to be shocked. They're not going to be shocked because they've heard all the rhetoric before. All right, Sharon, listen, um, we're going to have to take off, but uh, Dominic Peters is saying good morning to his cousin, Sharon. Dominic Patrice. Sorry, Dominic Patrice, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I hear he's in Grenada. Oh, he is? Okay. <laughs> Seems like Grenada is too big for the both of us. And I see not. that I see that once again uh, we're having some issues this morning, Sharon. Please join me in prayer that this does not mean that we're turning to the days when we had all this crazy buffering going on here um, because it's, it's really pathetic. You, you, you're seeing us okay up there, right? I'm seeing it, seeing it okay. Um, I think you need a bath in the bush tree. <laughs> I ain't going that route. I ain't going that route, Sharon. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, but no. Yeah. Thank you, my dear friend, and please give my regards to Winty. All right, I will. When is he coming home? Um, he will know today. He's right now. He's off to to have his checkup. He had surgery on his eye yesterday. Everything went okay. Okay. So um, he would know today. I hear him saying this morning that he's coming up with me on Friday, but that will be for the doctors to decide. You know, when I found out that Winty was having uh, surgery on his eye, I I couldn't help but but I wondered, you know. Could it be from watching the West Indies performance that his eyes just went, I can't take it anymore. I was told that the older you get, the more likely you are to have that problem. So um, I have to remind him that as young as he thinks and as young as he behaves, his eyes seem to be objecting. All right. Thanks a lot, sweet. Okay, love. All right. Thank you to everybody. Bye-bye. Sharon's in Trinidad this morning. God knows where she's going to be next week or wherever. By the way, she and I are still going to get on the road. See, yesterday I thought about her because we were doing this tour around the island, well, up the uh, East Coast. And uh, I remember we talked about, you know, getting out on the road and shooting some stuff. I think it would be great because she knows a lot of the stuff out there. So... Um, by the way, there's a little restaurant we came across in Grenville yesterday. Really neat little place. I'd never heard of it before, let alone been there. It's near to the uh, Deluxe Cinema. I think it's called Good Something, Good Food or whatever, Good Something. Well, boy, let me tell you, good stuff, good stuff. Check it out. We didn't go for KFC and stuff like that. It's just a local restaurant, you know. Good veggies, good fish, and uh, pasta, and stuff like that. Yeah. Quick break, my dear friends, and we shall come on back and wrap it up. For business owners, it's vital that they make efficient use of energy resources. So we're here today to show how Granlec supports their success. To energize our nation's businesses, Granlec works closely with them to ensure a positive impact on customer satisfaction, economic development, and the continued growth of our nation. It's all part of the commitment the Grenlec team makes to business owners and residential customers every day. Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. 
With free island-wide delivery, Hubbard's building supplies and lumber departments continue to provide the best quality lumber, steel, tiles, plumbing materials, electrical, and general hardware supplies at competitive prices. We continually consult with builders, homeowners, and contractors to improve product range and services. Enjoy discounts where applicable, including the use of credit and debit cards. At Hubbard's Building Supplies, Grand Dance, and Lumber Department, Caronage, we offer quality service, affordable prices, giving you the convenient, reliable, free island-wide delivery. Call 440-2087 for all your home improvement and building solutions. Parting word from the Holy Scriptures for today, the third day of uh, July. From the first book of John, chapter 1, verses 8 to 10, it says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, however, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim that we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Pilgrims, that came to you from the first book of John, chapter 1, verses 8, 9, and 10. Okay, that's going to do it for us here on this Wednesday morning, middle of the week. I hope that so far the week's going just fine and that the rest of it will be even better. So Georgie Porgy is saying thanks to Sharon for joining us this morning and sending God's blessings your way. And by his grace, let's do it all over tomorrow morning. Ciao.